In this video, you'll learn how to optimize images for your website and you'll do it without losing any data quality. There are several benefits to having optimized images on your website. First off, it's a faster website that you get when people are coming to your site, it loads faster. Second, search engine optimization. There is a ranking factor with fast websites and Google has even mentioned that yes, that is a ranking factor. So it's a little bit better to have optimized images for a better search engine optimization. And whether you have an affiliate site or a sales e-commerce or a leads generating site, then it's very helpful for improving conversion. So if the person comes to your site and they're going to where they're wanting to go to do the thing you want them to do, then this will help with that as well. And then finally, but probably most importantly is it's a better user experience. So your readers are coming to your site and it's just a better user experience for them because they don't have to wait for all of these images to download. So if you're ready, let's dive in. I'm going to walk you through, basically I'm going to take our site and this is the site we're going to, as the example, this is what it looks like. I'm using the Astra theme with a starter template. The starter template is the outdoor adventure. And what I want to do is basically get a page from here. So I just created a page called life and it just has a lot of information on it. There's no images. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through, I'm going to show you the speed of this page right now with no images. Then I'm going to upload all of these images. These are several great looking images. And if you look at the details of these, they're huge. So there's like 3.84 meg. The dimensions are just massive. The basically they're coming straight from a camera. So I'm going to upload all of those to the life page. Then we'll test out the speed again. So you can really see the difference between having no images, having huge images, and then having optimized images for your website. So we're going to copy the life post search for pingdom and pingdom is just one speed test. There's also another one like GT metrics. It's a good one as well. So tools.pingdom.com and I'm going to paste in that URL just so we can get a baseline of what the test is. Choose the closest location from you. It's more important that you choose the same location every time you do the test. So I'm doing DC and I'll do it again. So go through and tell us what the speed is of the web page. All right, scrolling down, we have a B performance grade of 87. Page size is 229 kilobytes. The load time is about 1.23 and 25 requests. So nothing that I'm going to get crazy about or go nuts over. I just wanted to see a baseline. So now that we know that I'm going to minimize that. And now we want to adjust this page and we're going to upload a lot of images. Okay. So we've added about six of them, plenty to test this out with. Let's go ahead and click update. And if you remember, most of them were very large. The average of them were, you know, anywhere from 1.5 all the way up to seven and a half or megabytes. So pretty large. So we're going to update this and now we want to copy the link. You see all of those are here and this is a really large theme anyway, meaning all the images show up in a really large way anyway. So then we want to go back to Pingdom website speed, speed test. Remember we had a page size of 229 load time of 1.23 and 87. So now we're going to start it again. Make sure it's in DC just to keep those things the same. Okay. So now looking at the page size, if you remember before we had 229 kilobytes and now we're at over 2.5 kilobytes. And so that's increased the overall page size by over 10 times. And that's just one. So if you think about it over time and multiple blog posts that we do, that's just going to bog down the whole site even more and more and more. So let's go through the process of what you want to do to optimize any of your images and what's the best way to do that. The first thing you want to make sure that you're doing is before you're uploading, there's a couple of things you want to do. First, you want to save your images in the right format. And there's usually three that you're going to work with. 
Most of us are going to work with JPEG and that's already compressing the images for us. Then you may sometimes have to do a PNG. That's if you have a transparent background or something like a simpler text overlay type thing, then you might use a PNG. You also might use a GIF or a GIF, however you want to say it. And that's for the animated images. So those are the three main ones you will work with. By and large, JPEG will be for a lot of what we do. The next thing you want to look at is changing the dimensions of your images before you upload them. For instance, we don't need these dimensions. They're just too large. I'm not even going to be able to showcase these images at this size simply because my website can't show them that large. So depending on what your theme is, you'll want to make sure that you're working within the dimensions that are proper for that theme. For instance, if I were to stick with this one, there it's a pretty large image size anyway, and I would want to keep all of my file dimensions on my website, my image dimensions. I want to resize all my images to nothing larger than 1024 pixels wide. So the first thing we would want to do is resize them. You can use any of the photo editing software out there to resize them. I would recommend resizing and saving as a new file. So you'll have the originals if you ever need them or if you ever need to change them. You can use something like Photoshop or anything like that. If you have something just like paint on Windows, then you can go into resize. When you open up paint and go to resize, choose pixels so you know what you're working with. And for the width, you want to do 1024 and then it'll automatically do the vertical because we're keeping our aspect ratio. And then we can say OK. And instead of clicking save, we want to do file save as, and we're going to create a new folder, new sizes, and then I'm going to save it in there. And you see down here, it's saved as a 1024 by 682. Again, you can use anything like Adobe Photoshop. If you have Adobe, then that's great because Adobe will also compress your images as well. And you want to do that for all your images. Use the dimensions to size up, size them, size them up for your website. And then the next thing you want to do is go ahead and compress them. Like I said, many software programs will allow you to resize as well as compress. For instance, Adobe Photoshop will do that for you. A free alternative would be GIMP. GIMP is another great one that you can use. It's kind of an uh, Adobe alternative, something that I used to use. Now I use Affinity Designer for my items and that compresses as well. Now, if you don't have a compression or a service that you use, something like Tiny PNG can compress your images for you. So I'm going to take, I'm going to close this out and I'm just going to take that image that we just resized and it's 235. The file size is 235. So you can just go through here and upload all of the images that you want to compress. For instance, I'm going to left click and drag this up here. So it's going through and it's compressing it, showing me what it was and now what it is. So, and then it gives you just how much did it compress it for you. So then you just want to go through, download that. Normally, you'd probably just want to overwrite that, but just to show you how this is going, we're going to keep these separate. And now I download that. So then again, we see this is 235. And then if I go into my compressed, I see it's 172. So that's the image that we want to now upload to our website. And you'll want to do that for all the images that you have on your site. You want to resize them, then compress them, and then upload them. And there are a few other websites. For instance, you have JPEG Mini, which will do the same thing and it'll show you the difference before and after of how your image looks. You can use this as well as Tiny PNG. Now your workflow is now taking your images, resizing them, and then you want to compress them. And if you don't want to compress them on a third party website, or if you want to compress them with your software, you can also use a plugin and a lot of people will add a plugin to compress them. And we'll have a link in the description below of all the plugins that we recommend to choose from. But to quickly go through them, you have Optimal. The folks at Themal have created that and it will do the optimization on your website. You have 
EWWW image. Is it ooh? I don't know. Optimizer. You have compress JPEG and PNG. So the tiny PNG, this is their plugin as well. You have Imagify, which the folks at WP Rocket have created that. And if you want, you can watch this video and tutorial that I put together on how to install WP Rocket. WP Rocket is a caching plugin that speeds up and boosts your site speed as well. And one of my favorites, I use Short Pixel on my personal sites. You also have Smush It and Resmush It. So again, we'll showcase the link in the description below of all the the plugins that you can use and put on there. And what I like about these is you can compress them in Adobe or GIMP or in whatever program you use, and you can upload it and just see just how much more can it compress it without losing any quality of it. So then to show you the final result, I'm going to go through and go ahead and resize all of them, compress them all and re-upload them to that live post. And then we're going to come back here and see how it did. Okay, now we have removed the old images. We've added the new ones, added the new smaller ones. You see right here, it's a 10 by 24 and a much smaller file size here. So we've added those to the life page. So I wanna copy that and see how did it do. So go back to Kingdom and we'll start a new test. And you see now it's a much smaller. It's just under a meg. It's not quite as small as not having any images, but it's definitely smaller file size, page size than what we had when we had all the images installed. And then the more you work on your site, the more you want to know how your site is doing. And the best way to do that is by installing a plugin called Monster Insights. Monster Insights does a great job of pulling in all of the data from your Google Analytics account into your WordPress dashboard. On top of that, it is the easiest way to connect your WordPress website to Google Analytics. You can see your top landing pages, your search console, you can import your search console information as well as several other things. You can even see real-time data for your website. To get started, just head over to monsterinsights.com and make sure you use promo code WPBVIP to get the best discount on Monster Insights. So that's a detailed way of how to optimize your images for the web without losing quality. Let us know in the comments below, which workflow are you going to do to work on your images? And thanks for watching.